whether you're on a small budget, a micro budget, or a huge budget for the biggest commercial of your life, preparation is always your best friend. The script, whatever that is, that can be an actual screenplay, it could be a treatment, it could be just a description of what you're trying to do. Your project is going to start and end there, and it's really going to live and breathe there. So if there are errors, if there are things that don't make sense, if there are characters that aren't fully fleshed out, if there are ideas that aren't fully fleshed out within your story, within your script, then it's nothing you can really do about that. You can't fix that in post. Of course, you can probably make some stuff look pretty or you can just make it feel, I guess, which, you know, you see a lot of that today. But your script is everything. I would say make sure that the beats that you need to hit are within your script or your treatment or your description, whatever it is you're using to guide you along uh, your production. Secondly, I would say make sure that your script is actually something that you can execute. If you're writing a script for this big sprawling intro, like the Goodfellas intro, but you don't have a Goodfellas budget, then when you get to production, you're gonna run into some things. You're gonna run into some issues. Does that mean that you just leave out a car chase or you leave out the shooting scene or you leave out the gun scene because you don't have prop guns or you don't have this or you don't have that or you don't have a VFX person? No, that just means that you have to be creative with how you go about telling that story. The next thing is make sure that your characters are clearly defined. And this will come into play later when working with the actors, but make sure your characters have clearly defined roles, clearly defined purposes. Like, what is the purpose of said character? Locations, especially when you're working on a lower budget, are invaluable because they can add a level of production value to your project that you couldn't really pay for. Or if you did pay for it, it would just cost a lot of money. Okay, so now we get into the fun stuff, which is cinematic philosophy. And this comes down to how you're going to approach your film cinematically. And this is typically gone over either with yourself, if you're shooting it yourself, or if you're working with the DP, this is like, what are you actually aiming to achieve with the images that you're trying to make? What are you trying to have the audience feel with what you're creating? How I usually approach this is by coming up with different catchphrases. So for, I wish I could see heaven, we used a basketball reference when I was talking to Chuck about it. It was like, hey, we're only shooting threes and layups. So pretty much what that meant was we are, we're either getting the camera very close or we're shooting from far away. Whereas in a sentimental mood, we decided to shoot on the longer end of, the, of our focal length. We shot Super 35, but we shot mainly from 50 to 55 to 85 on in a sentimental mood. And that was because we wanted the audience to feel like they were in having conversations. They were in conversations that they shouldn't be allowed into. These are like private conversations. We wanted the audience to feel somewhat voyeuristic, but we didn't want to go too far with it. So it's not like we shot with like 100 mil lenses or anything like that. And quite frankly, that's a deviation from my traditional style because my two favorite focal lengths are 28 and 35. So you want to pick the right camera for the job and the right lenses for the job. Now, mind you, this is getting into first world territory because a lot of times you got to use the camera you have, whether that's an iPhone or back in the day, we had the Canon T3i or 60D or whatever, or 600D, whatever you wanted to call it at the time. But now that we have a little bit more resources, we shoot most of our films on the Ursa 12K right now. 
but we do have certain points where we pick different lenses. We own a set of DZL Vespits, which we shot Heaven on. The reason why you wanna pay attention to your camera and lens choice is because there are different elements or different characteristics that different cameras have. In terms of your lenses, you wanna pick lenses that have characteristics that will help tell your story better. I might have like a little bit of a different philosophy as a director in that I do not believe that directors pull good performances out of actors or great performances out of actors. I believe that directors create an environment for actors to thrive. When you're working with really good actors, they ask a lot of questions. And that goes back to the first point that I made about scripting. You want to make sure that your script has robust characters because you're going to get questions that you need to be able to answer from your actors. That's all I wanna say for right now. I'm gonna make an entire video about working with actors, but I don't have enough time to do that now because I know this video is probably gonna be the longest one that I've made so far in these recent uh, in these recent few videos. I appreciate you guys. Make sure that you prepare as best as you can, no matter what your budget is. And we've made films, you would be shocked with the what we've made with the amount of money that we've made it for. And people are always like, man, how'd y'all do this? How much money did you have? I always say it doesn't matter, man. It matters how you prepare. Make sure that you're preparing adequately. If it takes you, if it takes you six months, to prepare and get it right it's going to pay off i appreciate y'all man and um you know see y'all on the next video peace